This is a Dorian scale guitar improvisation lesson over the tune So What by Miles Davis. What does it mean to improvise with the Dorian scale? When and why and how should we think of a scale as a mode versus just the major scale that it comes from? And how do we make any of that sound good? Well, in this lesson, we're gonna go over multiple simple exercise steps that you can practice to sound great improvising over the tune So What by Miles Davis using the Dorian scale. I love playing this tune. It's so simple. So many people know it. You can call it at jam sessions. You can play it with your friends. If you're new to jazz guitar improvisation and you want to play solos over this tune, so what? I think you're going to love this lesson. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that teach musicianship skills on the guitar so we can express ourselves more freely, more confidently with improvisation, arranging, technique, music theory, fretboard mastery, and more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new lesson videos every week. Here's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover the C major scale that the mode comes from first. I have specific ways of practicing all this stuff. The hands-on practice is the stuff that matters. That's how we really get it down. I'll show you exactly what to play. We'll talk about what a mode is, what is Dorian mode, and then we'll play it as Dorian so we can hear it and feel it and get it down that way. Then we're gonna practice improvising with it over one chord at a time in very specific ways, a few series of improvisations. And then we're gonna do all of that over the whole tune itself and we'll be flying. You'll see how it'll work and you get your hands hands on with the exercises and you will be doing it. At the end, I'll have a bonus tip for you on a, kind of a secret weapon of how to use phrasing to make our improvisation much, much easier in terms of knowing where we are in a tune. Pretty powerful tip that will be helpful once you're doing this more, so stick around for that. Uh, if you want a free download of the scale diagrams that we're gonna be playing with and every other scale diagram, you can get my free PDF of all the scale diagrams in, with the link in the top of the description. It's called my Printable Parent Scales PDF. You can get that also by going to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales, and those will be the uh, shapes and forms that we're using in this lesson, and they have every other chord type in there as well, or every other scale type. The first exercise is that we want to drill the C major scale up and down. We're going to do it in the fifth position, but you'll want to do this in other places as well, and I'll talk about that in a later step in the lesson, but first we're going to do it here. Okay, be able to play that up and down. It is the C major scale. This is the root of C right here, but just play it from the lowest note to the highest note. That is exercise one. Okay, exercise two is playing it with the root to root method, which I, in my scale series, I'll put a link to my scale series where I go through every scale type, different lessons on each one. I play all the scales with root to root, which means we play the root first, we pause and repeat on any other root, or we at least repeat every other root, and we don't repeat any other note. This makes it actually sound like the scale instead of just a sequence of notes. So we'll start on C, repeat the C that we get to here, repeat this C, don't repeat any other notes. And you can pause there if you want to. But notice we're playing every note, every note in the whole form. So I'm going doo 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 doo, going below and back. So here it is again. Okay, so that is the root to root uh, drill for C. Next, let's define what a mode is. A mode is just the same collection of notes that we just played. It's just a scale, but we're changing what the root is. We're changing what the main note is. So C major scale has C as the root, okay? So if any other note in the scale, the one we're gonna use is this, the second note of the scale, do, do, one, two, okay? If we call that the root instead, then we are playing the second mode of the major scale, and it has a whole different sound, but none of the notes changed. We're just treating this note as the home base. This is the second mode, and it is called the Dorian mode, and it's the mode that we are thinking of and playing in on this tune. This tune, so what is in the key, quote unquote, it's not really a key, it's in the tonality of D Dorian. It's not even like D minor 11, which chord charts will, chord uh, lead sheets will show you D minor 11, which you'll see as we play through it with the backing track, but it's really just D Dorian. It just means D is the root, D is the tonal center, and all the other notes are in there as kind of equally Dorian sounding notes. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's what it is. This is the root and every other note is just part of it, kind of like a chord, but just all kind of one scale. So that is what a mode is. And that is also how we're treating kind of the modal 
the modal jazz playing that we're playing here. So we're going to be playing the second mode. If you do that off any other note, you're playing the mode. So for example, this is one, this is seven, and this is six of the C major scale. If you treat six as the root, you're playing the sixth mode of the major scale. All the other notes are the same. That is the same thing as the natural minor scale. So that's A minor scale. So modes are being used you know, in that way all the time, and we can play any other mode we want. The natural minor scale, which is also called Aeolian and Dorian, and then the other mode that's very common, most popular kind of modes that you might hear, the other one is Mixolydian, which is off the five of the off of the five of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. If you call that the root, it's Mixolydian. You don't need to remember any of this. We're just trying to clarify what is a mode. You don't need to remember any of all those details unless you want to, but do remember, oh, okay, in general, that's what a mode is. The the scale is there, call something else the root. Boom, that's a mode. And we are in Dorian mode for this. Now let's move on to doing exercises playing the scale as Dorian. So we learned about the root to root approach to practicing scales. So we're gonna do it from D to D, the root to root of Dorian. And now we're gonna actually hear and feel and absorb the sound of Dorian. So we're gonna go, there's the next D right there. So you gotta repeat that note and go all the way up and turn around and land there again and repeat it go below to get all the notes below but the only time you pause or hang out or repeat is off the actual root of the mode this is how we can hear and practice the modes just in terms of up and down because we don't really have we're not just going to play the lowest to highest note we have kind of a physical position on the fretboard this allows us to have the root sound like the root and also play all these notes that are above and below it one more time okay so i want you to practice that and then let's move on to the next exercise the next exercise is to play constant notes from the dorian scale and you can just think of it as c major but you're playing constant notes from that collection of notes constant Anything though, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, 16th notes, but you can't pause or rest. It'll feel weird. Musically, you're gonna wanna do that later, but this just proves to our hands, our technique, and even our ears, just all of us musically, that we can have a note to go to that's the right note. So we're not pausing because we forgot where we are. We're pausing later because we will have a statement to make musically. We're gonna play constant notes over this, what's called D minor 11 in the backing track, but this just gives us roughly a Dorian sound. Okay, so any tempo, you don't have to play a backing track, you can use a metronome if you want, and constant notes, and just make sure you feel comfortable doing that. Two, three, four. That might feel fast, so just do this. Okay, if you get bored with it, at first you might feel like you're just going up and down the scale, so that's a good thing to notice. So you want to break it up more and try things. You want to feel like you could do that all day. That's a really important step to get to. So then you're just like, yeah, I could just do that all day. And then we can be more kind of creative and expressive with it later and not be thinking about uh, just where's the scale? What's the scale? So excellent first step to do, be able to play constant notes with the Dorian scale over uh, with in time. And if you're using a backing track like me, just have that one chord loop going. Next exercise, same thing, but with phrasing. This is critical. So now the phrasing means we're playing with space and time and we're playing ideas, we're trying to play things that relate, you're trying to play something that relates to something else you just played, trying to make sense musically, trying to have a statement or tell a story as people often say. And now that we've played constant notes, we know that our pausing when we play is because we want to, not because we have to. So here's an example of it. One, two, three, four. Lots of space. Repeat the same idea. Simple, right? I'm just repeating the same idea and changing it a little, giving a lot of space. Okay, 
Nothing wrong with some strings of notes. Okay, so it can be anything you want. You sound like you, you don't have to sound like me. And you can hear how, oh, that's a, that's a game changer. That's a world of a difference from the constant notes. Now we can just have fun and try to say something. It's okay if it's hard too, but be rhythmic, give some space, try to relate what you're saying to something you just said, maybe repeat the same rhythm, that kind of thing. Just, just really absorb yourself into it. And that's when we're actually feeling things and expressing things. It feels uh, enjoyable as opposed to the constant notes, which can be enjoyable, but it's just kind of a drill, right? It's just like an exercise. Um, so that's actual music right there. Now let's do those two things over the whole progression. So next exercise. Okay, so now we want to play constant notes over the whole progression. Ah, the progression, as we see on this backing track here, but I, you don't even need to see this for me to say, the B section of the tune goes up a half step. Okay, so all of these notes here go up a half step. Okay, so as kind of an intermediate step that I didn't officially put in the outline, you'll probably want to practice just the scale form like we did up a half step and the root to root off Dorian. Up a half step so you can kind of feel it, it can be different up a half step. So we're going to do eight measures in D Dorian, another eight measures in D Dorian, then eight measures up a half step, then eight measures again back down. A lot of the same stuff, right? So to be making this musical, it's all about the phrasing in the end. But this exercise of constant notes first is just going to make sure we feel really confident playing something. Let's give it a go. I'm going to go up a half step at that key change and otherwise play constant notes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That key change. Ooh, it sounds so cool when it happens. One, two, three, and change. That was one time through constant notes, quarter notes, a little bit of triplets sometimes, 16th notes. Doesn't matter, just keep, keep playing without rests. You guessed it, the next exercise is to play through the whole tune with the phrasing, and really, this is the you're doing it step. I often do this where we lead up to things, and at some point, the next just normal step, hey, next natural progression of the exercise is the you're doing it moment. Like, hey, this is it, this is what we wanted, and that's what this is now, the phrasing over the whole thing. Okay, phrasing over the whole thing demonstration. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That's it, you're doing it, you have arrived, you're improvising. If you wanna break out of that position and play in other places on the fretboard, you simply follow all of those steps from a different scale form. So you would find C major scale somewhere else, find the D note, play D to D root on it, improvise constant notes, improvise phrasing in this other place. All of those scale diagrams are in my printable PDF 
that you can get to show all your scales and just lay it out on the guitar, all in C major too. And it happens to be that way. So you could just follow those diagrams, do all those steps from there, move them up a half step for the tune you're playing. Then at that point, kind of seeing it all over the fretboard. So here's your bonus tip. This is super important. This is what's gonna become a problem as you do this if you haven't already kind of stumbled on this already. It's really hard to know where we are in the tune by ear. You don't wanna look at the backing track, even though on the screen I highlight it for you so you can see that. But in our own playing, we just wanna do it by ear and feel. We need to feel when four measures went by, eight measures went by, 16 measures went by, and we have uh, 24 measures in a row of the D Dorian <laughs> mode in this case. Uh, because we have 16 up top and eight, another eight at the bottom. So how the heck do you know where you are? The secret I learned over time is that it's with our phrasing. So if you make a phrasing statement that lasts two measures by playing something, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then giving that space and then starting again. Now I'm thinking in chunks of two measures and I just need to think of those or feel those. So now I'm thinking if I do four statements in a row that each take up two measures, my music is going to be better too. But now I can just think of, oh, that was one section of the tune. Four statements was one section of the tune. And of course, if you do a statement that's longer, you can think in longer chunks. You see how powerful that is? Instead of thinking of beats, instead of counting measures, we just count, uh, not even count, but feel like, oh, I've, I've played now one whole kind of sentence, which took up two, 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 two four different phrases that each took up two measures. Okay, let me demonstrate quick because this is a really important uh, concept. So I'm just gonna think in exactly the way I just talked about. One, two, three, four. Boom, okay, so that was actually saying something musically and I know it took up exactly this amount of space and I wasn't looking at it or anything, just feeling it because I did an idea, gave it space and that was this. I did another idea, gave it space, another idea, gave it space and all of them related to each other because I was repeating rhythms and kind of concluded the idea here. So that really, that was all one connected idea that I know took up one section, the A section of the tune. And then it's easy to know, oh, I'm here and I'll just start over with a new idea. So that's the secret weapon to knowing where you are in a tune like this. I find it uh, very helpful. I post a new lesson video every week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.